blood boil. Someone got paralyzed getting a Brazilian butt lift. Is it worth not being able to, nobody can even see your butt if you're stuck in a wheelchair. Like, that is ridiculous. And then they went to talk about how the doctor flew their family in and put them in a mansion and took good care of them. But you're paralyzed. They're doing that because they know they just jacked you up. They're guilty. They're hoping you don't sue them or something. I don't know. That's not normal. You shouldn't be getting par paralyzed from a Brazilian butt lift. But you know why that happened? Probably because the doctor was trying to put it in the deep layer so that the fat will live. And they went so deep that they hit your sciatic nerve which is the main uh, nerve going down your leg, it comes out of your butt. It comes out of your butt. It, it exits from your butt muscles into your leg. And so they probably drove their lipo cannula into the sciatic nerve and messed it up. And so now the girl can't walk. Ridiculous. But that's because they're trying to shove liters and liters of fat into a butt cheek. And then they heard somebody say, oh, put it in multiple planes. And so they went so deep that they made the child... I'm, I, you, I'm not I'm not here to bash doctors not on this one anyway it, you shouldn't be going to any doctor that has um, multiple pictures floating around of people that are disfigured it doesn't matter like you shouldn't go to them pe those people and uh, and the and one of, and the doctor who that was is a popular one so that's that's all I'm gonna say I'm not this particular Facebook live I'm not blasting doctors I'm just trying to teach you to um, think logically when you're researching okay so this person is paralyzed, but she has a big butt. I, I don't even know about what complications she may have gotten from the butt, from the, um, beyond the paralysis from the Brazilian butt lift. But, um, yes, it was. And the, yes, this person, I think this person is in the Dominican Republic. I think. I'm not sure. This stuff happens in the United States too, though. This is not a U.S. versus, um, DR or Columbia issue. This is a plastic surgery by people who don't have ethics issue. And plastic surgery for people who are desperate for a body that they saw on somebody's Instagram page, whether or not it's safe or not. That's the issue. If you're willing to lay down and risk your life to, to get a certain body, like knowing that people have these horrific complications, I'm going to tell you some normal complications that you can expect from any surgery. And then I'm going to tell you the ones that are, that are things you should never see in a cosmetic situation. Bleeding is a normal complication of any operation. No, every surgeon has had a bleeding complication at some point. Okay. Infection. You can get an infection with any surgery. There's, but there's infections and then there's infections. Okay. There, um, what else? Um, asymmetry because your body is not asymmetric to start. And if God couldn't make it be exactly the same on both sides, you can't expect a human to pull that off either. Although, you know, we try our best to make things similar on both sides. That's a reasonable one. Um, sometimes you might be able, you might get little bitty small open areas on, on an incision if the incision's really long or the person's thicker, um, or if the person smokes. But that's why most board certified plastic surgeons don't do cosmetic surgery on smokers. If you smoke, I'm not cutting you. So that helps me keep that um, complication from happening. Um, complications that are unacceptable especially on a regular basis necrosis you shouldn't be getting any nothing no nothing should be dead after you get a cosmetic procedure nothing the only times that i've had necrosis on patients that i've worked on is when i was in the re doing reconstruction and so we had to do you know there's times in, in reconstruction where you have to do the surgery whether the person is healthy or not and so those are the people who have who have diabetes um, um, cardiovascular disease they smoke and then you have to do this big operation then those are the people who you tend to get things like necrosis and stuff like that not in a healthy 20 something 30 something 40 something year old female with no medical problems who goes into surgery totally normal should not be having dead tissue anywhere when a person gets dead tissue most 9 times out of 10 in a cosmetic setting like if you're dealing with um, liposuction and tummy tucks that is where because the doctor knocked out blood supply knocked out too much blood supply to a particular area and that makes tissue die well real real plastic surgeons we're trying we know where all these blood vessels are we know where we can go and where we shouldn't go um, in one setting to keep the tissue alive so 
When you're dealing with people who haven't learned the foundation, the basic principles of safe plastic surgery, they're don't, they have no clue. So then sometimes they get lucky and they do these certain combination of procedures and, they, and they're okay. And then they'll do it on another couple of people and they both and all of them people might get necrosis. So that's something that you shouldn't be seeing on a regular basis from any doctor who does cosmetic surgery. Not saying never, there's no, you'll never hear me say never or always, but most often you shouldn't be getting those types of, you shouldn't be dealing with necrosis in a cosmetic procedure. This is when people are being way, way, way too aggressive or they're doing way too many surgeries in one area at one time. If it's, if, if you want to have, if it's a lot of things you need done, you have to be prepared to get more than one surgery or if it's a lipo thing, more than one round. This is why doctors have um, BMI cutoffs. So the person that I helped yesterday, um, she had flown to the Dominican Republic with plans of getting her surgery. The next day, she was supposed to get it the day after she got there. And when she went to meet the doctor, the doctor said, no, you're too heavy. And she left. And then somebody else in Dominican Republic, somebody from some consulting group, vultures, people who were preying on the folks who got ejected from that practice, said, oh, I have a doctor who specializes in bigger women. And she said she thought it was a sign from God that she was supposed to go through the surgery. But I thought maybe it was the serpent in the Garden of Eden. It was Satan waiting for the people who got rejected from that office, telling them that they can come over to this other office. And then she got hurt. She got hurt. She was taken advantage of. She was vulnerable. They know if somebody has flown all the way from another country to get plastic surgery, they've flown all the way from another country to get plastic surgery, and then they get rejected as soon as they get there, that they are vulnerable. They want their surgery. They just flew all the way from another country, took off weeks of work, plan to be there, all of this stuff, and then somebody says, no, you can't have it. So then when the person who walks by and says, hey, 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 psst, hey, I'll do your surgery. I got a doctor who specializes in bigger women. After somebody just told her she was too big, and now she's hurt. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, I, I my question to, to, to the women is, like, who are you doing it for? Like, who who is, what is so important that you're going to, risk your life for it like i don't i just i don't understand it i'm not anti-plastic surgery obviously i'm a plastic surgeon i'm not anti-plastic surgery at all but i am anti plastic surgery and people who aren't in the right mental state to receive it i am anti unethical plastic surgery i'm anti doctors who don't care about hurting people um i i think people shouldn't be doing things that they aren't trained in so I just I had I had a conversation with the lady on Thursday and um, she had she had gotten liposuction from a dermatologist um, in Atlanta and she was a person who who um, who knowingly got surgery from a non-surgeon see people think liposuction oh it's just a little lipo I'm gonna put it into perspective for you if I were gonna have surgery by a non-surgeon, if I had to have surgery by a non-surgeon, I would want them to actually cut me open. And let me tell you why. When we do liposuction, it's a blind operation. The incisions are little, little, little. And then this cannula is going through all these tissues that you can't see because you're working through this little bitty baby incision. So the sur so you are, the surgeon is working based on their knowledge of the anatomy and by feel. So if I'm going to have somebody who doesn't know, who doesn't have a thorough knowledge of the anatomy because they haven't done surgery on it, I want them to be able to see. Right? Doesn't that make more sense? People think since the incisions in liposuction is small, that it's not a big deal. But that's why when people die from liposuction, usually what has happened, most of the time, most of the deaths that I've heard of from liposuction are from liver lacerations. They might perf perforate the person's diaphragm. Um, they might hit their spleen. 
And the reason they did that is because they have no respect for the anatomy because they haven't been they haven't been cutting in it. They probably haven't seen a liver or a spleen since cadaver lab when they were like 24. They probably haven't even seen it because if you're not a surgeon, you don't see that stuff. Just because somebody's a doctor doesn't mean they're they're they have um the skill set required to operate on you. So if I was going to have a person who's not a surgeon do a surgery on me, cut me open so that they can see, oh, wait a minute, that's her liver. Let me not touch it. Oh, wait, there's her spleen. Let me not hit that. But if you have a big, long wand with a hole on the end of it and you're ramming it in and out through this little hole that you can't see, so basically you're blindly stabbing at stuff and you have no respect for the anatomy, that is a recipe for disaster, which is pretty much what people, that's what keeps happening to people. You can't do that. <sighs> I just want people to be more respectful of the fact that it's surgery, it's your body, you only have one of them, and it's not worth dying for. And for the person who says, well, U.S. doctors don't make as good of bodies as the people in the Dominican Republic, then to my argument is if you can't, or Colombia, or Brazil, or wherever, wherever else they're going, just make sure it's a real plastic surgeon in those countries, at least then. And make sure they don't have a rate of, of death and disfigurement that is comparable to their success rate. Like, you don't want it to be like, oh, well, I know all these girls over here that got hurt. But then these girls' bodies was on point. Like, that's not... There's, there's plastic surgeons in all those countries, real ones that are good. They come to our conferences and teach us stuff. Find those. Don't go to all of these people. If you see, if you keep seeing pictures of... of um of dead tissue and dead women from a doctor who can do a sweet Brazilian butt lift and make you a really small waist, that's not worth it. Go to somebody else in that country. If you just want to go over there, that's cool. You got a right to do that. Just be safe about it. Just be safe. That's it. Nobody should be dying for a butt. And the reason why I even care, because like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm not looking for Brazilian butt lift clients. That's not, that's not the type of, that's not, the t I don't really like how those look, so I, I'm not gonna make that. That those that sh I'm not gonna make that little bitty waist and those big hips and the big butt because I don't like how it looks. So I, I'm not saying this to get you to come to me. I'm saying this because the people who are being hurt the most are minority women who have less money, which is me before I became a plastic surgeon. A minority woman I, my mom is a hairstylist my father was a crackhead I grew up on the east side of Cleveland they're preying on on people like me and I feel like these doctors they don't care they don't care about you they don't care they're preying on you they're they're excited that in three weeks you're gonna have your tax return 